Members, it's now time for members' statements. The member from Thornhill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and I'm very pleased to welcome Ari Mogimi and Adrian Cormier because Ari was actually kind of my host. He invited me to come to a Persian gala that took place last week, and it was called the Simur Gala. And Simur is, if I may, Mr. Speaker, show picture. It's a bird that stands for unity, and not just unity within the Persian community, but unity between all the different communities in my very diverse riding of Thornhill, as well as all the different communities that we have here in Ontario. And we all know, Mr. Speaker, that it's the holiday season, and we all want to work together to learn about each other's cultures, learn about you know, the different holidays and the different customs, but also make some good friends and cherish memories within the community. One of the very great recipients that received awards that night is somebody that I've gotten to know very well, Amit Tabrizi. And he started out as a chemical and petrochemical engineer in Iran, earned a master's degree in 1969, and he didn't realize that in the coming years he would be a very integral part of the Iranian community here in Canada. Mr. Tabrizi is currently the president and founder of the Paria Trillium Foundation, the first Iranian community centre in Canada, and it's in my riding of Thornhill. How lucky are we? So I want to say to congratulations to all the recipients, specifically my very dear friend Ahmed, and we're looking forward to many more events at the Paria Centre. Thank you. For the member of states, the member from Benley, Gore-Malton. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'm rising today to discuss a very serious matter of systemic racism that exists and that has shown to exist in the York Region Public School Board. Uh, earlier this year, we came to learn how a principal in this region made some very Islamophobic comments on social media. They were very clear. It was all across social media. Parents complained about it, but the board did nothing. And the principal remained in a school, making parents and their children feel unwelcome and unsafe because of the climate that was created by these anti-Muslim, uh, these Islamophobic comments. In fact, other members of the community came forward. Members of the black community came forward and said, listen, we've also experienced anti-black racism. And as a member of an ethnic community, of a racialized community, of an equity-seeking community, we need to show solidarity with all community members seeking to be treated with justice and fairness. Schools particularly need to be places where people are safe. Those students only make up a small percentage of our population. They make up 100% of our future. We need to ensure that schools are safe and that school boards understand they implement policies that protect people against any sort of prejudice, any sort of bigotry. Right now, people in the York region are feeling unwelcome and they feel unsafe, they feel disrespected. This government has an obligation and a responsibility to ensure that no further acts of prejudice, of racism, of bigotry can continue in this region. We need to ensure that there is strong leadership so that our students have a strong and safe place to learn. Thank you. Further members, members from Durham. I am Thank you, Speaker. I am pleased to rise today and to bring attention to a very important development in the township of Skugag. Recently, local council gave conditional approval to the Lake Skugag Stewart project to improve health and wellness of the lake. The goal of the project is threefold, develop a naturally engineered wetland a naturally, and to not, a naturally act as stormwater treatment area, build an additional accessible shoreline walkway featuring a new iconic bridge structure, educational signage, and connections to existing trails, connecting the beach area to Palmer Park, which, which is a point near Voss Independent Grocers. Dredge a large acreage of Lake Skugag to improve the health and, of the lake and surrounding shoreline, increasing rec recreational usage, improve aesthetics and provide economic, environmental, recreational and social benefit to Skugag Township. Picturesque Lake Skugag is a top attraction in beautiful downtown Port Perry, and I'm very thankful for the work the lake stewards have done and will continue to do to improve the lake. Special thanks to Barbara, Bill, Rob, Bobby and the rest of the team for their commitment to their community and I do appreciate very much the work they're doing and they will continue to do. Thank you, Speaker.
Thank you. Further member statements the member from Lambton Kent Middlesex. Thank you uh, very much, Mr. Speaker. Falls View Casino Resort and Casino Niagara have made Niagara Falls a premier gaming destination in Canada, and it's important for Niagara that the area's two resort casinos continue to flourish. In fact, the Niagara Falls City Council has unanimously three times called upon the Ministry of Finance through the Ontario Lottery and Gaming Corporation to immediately include Niagara's two resort casinos in its modernization plans. However, the OLG did not consult the City of Niagara Falls when they published the request for pre-qualifications and request for proposals regarding the modernization process, and the City of Niagara Falls was not engaged by OLG to discuss the details of the RFPQ and was only notified the day before its release, and the RFPQ stresses a model that is strictly based upon revenue generation. The RFPQ is not designed to retain and create new gaming or spin-off jobs, encourage investment, and serve as a catalyst for economic development, which is contrary to the city's express goals and objectives. Therefore, the government should ensure the city's goals and objectives are considered, and the city should be treated as a key partner in this process. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Hamilton Mount. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise again to plead on behalf of Justin Masadi, a 17-year-old from Hamilton battling an extremely rare form of brain cancer. Unable to get effective treatment in Ontario, Justin is receiving alternative treatment in Mexico. To date, OHIP has refused to cover the cost of this treatment. Justin and his family are desperate, in desperate need of assistance from this government. As requested, the minister now has the request payment of out-of-office health service form signed by Justin's doctor, and I'm asking the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care again to help. Two days ago, I presented petitions in the Legislature signed by over 2,000 people. Today, I will be pre presenting another 1,400. Speaker, these signatures were collected in just a few days, reflecting the depth of concern felt by our community. This evening, a fundraiser is being held at St. Thomas More School at 1045 Upper Paradise, starting at 7 p.m. Everyone is welcome to come out and enjoy the live music, baked goods, and silent auction. That's what our community is doing, but Justin needs this government to step up to the plate. Again, I ask the Minister of Health and Long-Term Care to fund the transportation and medical costs for Justin Masadi on compassionate grounds. Thank you very much, Speaker. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Beaches East York. Well, thank you, Speaker. Twas the last day before Christmas, and all through the House, the members were stirring to get home to their spouse. Their constants were hopeful from media glare that promises made would eventually be there. House duty committees and stakeholder receptions, all done with elan to no one's objections. <laughs> Premier Wynne answering questions with care, assuring that green energy will soon be everywhere. And Patrick Brown, all snug as his bed, with visions of by-elections dancing in his head. And Speaker will tell you, if you're naughty or nice, come to order, he'll say, but only just twice. So come Lou and Harinder, Jagmeet and Joe Dixon, Del Duca knows well our highways need fixing. And crumbs left from Santa, once resting on plates, now caught in the stashes of Percy and Gates. And as the house rises, all with great smiles, as Santa's sleigh is secured with loyalty air miles. Yes. So when the house rises, I'll let out a big cheer. The Tories' filibustering is done for the year. Speaker, I would like to wish every member of the House a very memory, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year, safe year 2017. Thank you. Bravo. Thank you, Speaker. I rise to speak about Employment Ontario. Last week, the Auditor General confirmed the government's inability to competently and successfully encourage job creation. And speaker, the government spends more than $1 billion a year on skills development programs without knowing what the jobs of today and tomorrow are. Speaker, many of the Auditor General's findings were deeply troubling. The Ministry of Advanced Education and Skills Development does not collect or analyze regional information on Ontario's labour force. Only 38 per cent are finding full-time employment through the Employment Services Program, and fewer than half of those who begin an apprenticeship program complete it. 
It's even more worrying, uh, Speaker, when you note that youth unemployment in Ontario remains well above the national average. Yet the government appears more interested in flashy headlines than ensuring Ontarians are prepared for the workforce. Speaker, we'll continue to hold the government accountable for Ontario's growing skills gap because it's time for this government to take real action and stop graduating people for yesterday's jobs. Thank you for the member statements. The member from Ottawa, Daniel. Monsieur le Président, je me lève aujourd'hui pour. I raised in the chamber to to highlight all the work done in my in my writing. I participated in a breakfast community, which is a real tradition in Vanier in my riding. One more time, the event uh, achieved is uh, ob funding objectives, as I wish to highlight, highlight how important it is to participate in the activities of the community. I wish to congratulate everyone, the chef, the cooks, the sponsors who were responsible for the organization of this uh, a, of the event and is and is and the president and all the team of the community services center and this center is very important for the area. I wish to recognize all who make, uh, through their labor and commitment, Ottawa Vanier the place that it is. It was truly wonderful to see all sectors, businesses, schools, various organizations from all communities coming together to celebrate their community and their social engagement. Merci donc aux organisateurs pour ce vibrant témoignage de la vitalité communautaire à Vanier, un quartier accueillant. Thanks for everything. It's a great neighborhood and with a great future. We're back and we're hiring. It was the message at a recent flag raising ceremony at the gigantic steelworks in Nanticoke. A little over a year ago, the reforged Stelco began a process of re-establishing itself as an independent Canadian steel company at uh, both uh, Nanty Coke and Hamilton, employing more than 2,200 people under President Michael McCaid. These fully integrated industry-leading facilities are among the most safe, environmentally progressive, and productive steel plants in the world. We also return to the 1929 Stelco dog bone logo, which represents the initial stage of reforming a steel bar. Then as now, the restored logo was proudly stamped on military equipment destined for the front lines of World War II. I'll point out the very tip of the tallest free-stranding structure in the Western Hemisphere is proudly made of Stelco steel. Commissioned in 1980, the Lake Erie Works employs 1,400 people. Unionized employees are steel workers, local 8782, 8782B, under <coughs> President Bill Ferguson. They carry works as a coke battery, blast furnace, two steel making vessels, a twin strand slab caster, hot strip mill, and three pickling lines, 6,600 acres. Zone industrial with a 1.2 kilometer Lake Erie dock handling uh, St. Lawrence Seaway dimension ships. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It's